Here's your news for June 18th, 2020. And your headlines today include WWE calls off portion of television tapings. Why former Universal Champion opts out of WWE tapings. WWE brings back furloughed producer. WWE has four-phase plan to start touring again. WWE quietly moves SmackDown superstar to Raw. Why did Randy Orton cry? Why AEW stars were yelled at backstage. AEW's new matches, new signings, and more. We're starting today with some huge news from WWE, as the company is reportedly running way behind schedule due to the ongoing global situation. According to reports, several tests that were done on Monday didn't come back in time, which left a lot of people unable to enter the Performance Center for the latest set of tapings. It's since been reported that WWE chose to cancel their planned taping of SmackDown, and PW Insider is reporting that next week's edition of the Blue Brand will be filmed the day it airs. Though the show will be taped the same day, that doesn't mean it'll air live, as the show will instead be recorded on Friday and edited together mere hours before it airs on Fox. Losing yesterday's tapings has been a huge blow to the WWE, who were hoping to film SmackDown, Raw, Main Event, Raw Talk, and two episodes of 205 Live, but now will need to find some point in their busy schedule to film these shows at another time. It's also been reported that WWE's backstage atmosphere is being described like an asylum, and with stories like this, it's not hard to see why. Now, it's no secret that some WWE superstars are uncomfortable competing in the current climate, and now another name has joined Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. In a Fightful report that's been confirmed by The Observer, it's been noted that Kevin Owens was not present at the Raw tapings yesterday, and he told the company this was due to an individual testing positive on Monday. There's reportedly no heat on the former Universal Champion for this, and WWE hopes he'll return for the next taping. At one point, plans called for two episodes of Raw to be filmed this Monday, June 22nd, but there's been multiple changes to the schedule this week. Time will tell whether more wrestlers follow the example Reigns, Zayn, and Owens have set, but for now, the company is going to need someone else to fill Owens' spot. Speaking of filling spots, the latest episode saw non-superstars appear in the crowd, though WWE's dismissed reports of fans being allowed, saying that they were instead friends and family. According to Paul Davis of Wrestling News, the same friends and family were back this week at the Performance Center tapings, which led to a lot of unhappiness about this amongst the wrestlers. One anonymous superstar said that there was already unease about developmental talent acting as fans, but at least they were already in the area, whilst many of the family and friends have traveled across the country, and the feeling is that there's no need for them to be there or for the company to fill the venue with more unfamiliar people. Needless to say, the past few days have been tense to say the least, and the general feeling is it's only going to get tougher this week. With that in mind, it should be noted that there are some superstars who are just happy to be back working, and hopefully things will be back to normal in the near future. One person who won't be at the Performance Center for a while now is Michael Hayes, who will be out for a while due to hip surgery. To replace the Freebird, WWE has brought back Pat Buck, who was furloughed back in April, and he'll be taking the role as a producer, at least until Hayes is back when he's healthy. Buck is the first furloughed producer to be brought back, and it's being reported that he started on Monday during the Performance Center tapings. In the past, the company has said that they hope that all furloughed producers will be back by July, but right now, that mostly seems determined on how quickly they can bring back live events. There's been plenty of changes behind the scenes lately, from Paul Heyman being fired as executive director to Hayes' temporary absence, and we here at Slat Rock would like to wish the Hall of Famer a speedy recovery. We've mentioned that WWE is looking to bring back furloughed producers when they can tour again, and now the company's four-stage plan has been revealed. Phase 1 of the plan has already taken place, which saw a mix of NXT superstars and friends and family in the crowd, whilst Phase 2 will see NXT recruits be weaned out until it's just friends and family. It's being reported that select fans will eventually fill the Performance Center, but the company is keeping wrestlers from the gold brand around just in case they need to fill out the audience. 
Phase 3 of the plan will be a 100% live fan audience, as the company is shooting at 50% capacity right now, and the hope is that this will show fans at home that things are returning to normal. The belief is that fans at home who see a 50% capacity event full of friends and family in the crowd instead of superstars already assigned to the company will want to join in on the experience. Phase 4 is the final stage of WWE's plan, which will see the company touring again with regular fans, at least for TV and pay-per-view events, by the fall. Whilst it's a good plan in theory, Wrestling Inc. noted that it's likely to fall off the rails, especially as a second wave is seemingly imminent in Orlando. Out of the 500 tested at Orlando International Airport, 260 tested positive, and given that this is the airport WWE superstars and staff use to get in and out of Orlando, WWE's four-phase plan may be about to hit a serious bump in the road. We've got some lighter news now, and we all know WWE has been making some changes as of late, and that includes shaking up its roster. PW Insider is reporting that Mustafa Ali has quietly been moved to the Raw brand, though he's currently still listed as a SmackDown superstar on his official WWE profile. It's unclear how WWE will explain this move, if they explain it at all but it's possible that it could be explained as a response to AJ Styles' move to SmackDown a few weeks back, which was for future considerations, something Ali could be. After not being used on SmackDown for a while, the move to Raw could be a fresh start for the popular high flyer, as doing anything at all on the red brand would be better than being unused for SmackDown week after week. One Raw superstar who's certainly been kept busy is Asuka, though there's been concerns for the future of the Raw Women's Champion following Paul Heyman's exit from the red brand. It looks like the Empress of Tomorrow has nothing to worry about though, as our sources have said that Asuka won't be impacted by Heyman's removal despite being seen as a project of his. Vince McMahon is reportedly still high on the Raw Women's Champion, who he sees as a top player in the women's division. And according to Dave Meltzer, fans can expect for her to collide with Charlotte Flair after dealing with Nia Jax. From Raw to NXT now as a huge championship match has been announced for next week with even bigger implications. On next week's show, North American champion Keith Lee will defend his title against Finn Balor and Johnny Gargano, but whoever walks away with the title will have an even bigger opportunity down the line. That's because on July 8th, the NXT North American Champion, whoever that may be, will defend their gold against NXT Champion Adam Cole in a title-for-title -title collision. This came about when Cole said he wanted to regain the North American title, which he was the inaugural holder of, which caused NXT General Manager William Regal to come out and make the two huge title matches. The timing of the title for title match is certainly interesting as July 8th will also be the second night of AEW's Fighter Fest event, as it seems like the gold brand is making some big moves to keep wrestling fans tuned into their show. Speaking of the gold brand, we're looking at the recent online beef between Randy Orton and Tommaso Ciampa after the Viper sarcastically praised TakeOver in your house on Twitter, mocking how often superstars on the third brand slap their legs to make their moves seem more impactful. Speaking to CBS Sports recently, Orton said that his comments were taken far too seriously than what he intended, and admitted that the former NXT champion even got Orton feeling emotional, but not for the tweet. He said, That man has got a little baby. Just this morning I watched his Blackheart documentary on WWE Network that followed him around after his neck surgery. I'll admit, I welled up and I got a little tear in my eye when he woke up from the neck surgery and his beautiful little daughter was sitting on his lap and he was touching her face and just happy to see her and his wife. That's heartwarming. The 13-time world champion also stressed that superstars need to know how to make money in wrestling, and if that means NXT superstars get a better deal on Raw or SmackDown, then the Viper clearly feels that's better than starting and ending your career in NXT, something Ciampa said he plans to do. Over to AEW now, and if you've been watching the company for a while, you may have noticed some issues with dives outside of the ring. During Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez remarked that some in AEW are having issues catching their opponents, and it's led to some heated words backstage. He said, There have been a lot of people who have not been caught properly. Not just in AEW, but it's been a deal in AEW. There's been a lot of just bodies going flying, and they crash and burn on the ground. 
I do know that there have been people yelled at over it like, dude, start catching people here. We'll have to see if we notice wrestlers making the extra effort to catch their opponents from now on, and even just one slip-up could have life-changing consequences. Speaking of AEW, the company's roster has grown this week, as the company has signed the mysterious and creepy Abaddon to a deal after arriving on Dynamite. In addition to this, Tony Khan also announced that Ricky Starks has signed a deal after he debuted this week in a losing effort to TNT champion Cody Rhodes. With both Abaddon and Starks being young, the pair have plenty of years ahead of them, so fans should get used to seeing both wrestlers in AEW for a long time to come. We are looking ahead at Fighter Fest next as another huge match has been added. After helping best friends defeat Le Sex Gods while disguised as a cameraman, Orange Cassidy attacked Chris Jericho on this week's Dynamite, and the two will face off at Fighter Fest. Before Fighter Fest, though, we've got next week's Dynamite, which will feature the very first AEW Lumberjack match. On the show, Wardlow will face Luchasaurus in a Lumberjack match, and this match has been planned since March, but the company had to make changes due to the ongoing global situation. That won't be the only big match on next week's Dynamite, however, as FTR will compete against Natural Nightmares, while Sammy Guevara will face Matt Hardy. Brody Lee and Colt Cabana will face the team of Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela, and given that AEW World Champion Jon Moxley will be providing commentary on the show, it should certainly be an interesting and entertaining couple of hours on TNT. Back to WWE, and although Paige is known for her unique look and jet black hair, that's undergone a massive change. On social media, the former Divas champion shared a pic of her now blonde hairdo, stating that she's doing her best Gwen Stefani impression. Before any fans bleach their hair in solidarity, it's likely this new look is just a wig as she's uploaded another conversation to her Instagram story where she jokes about wigging it. The next time fans see Paige, she'll presumably be back to her jet black hair, though there were plenty of fans who believed she could pull off being the company's blonde bombshell. And we're ending today with news from our truth as the 24-7 champion is getting a new show on the network. Appearing on WWE's The Bump, R-Truth confirmed that his game show, appropriately titled R-Truth's Game Show, will premiere on July 14th. The show will feature superstars competing in various tasks, whilst answering questions via video calls while the 24-7 champion will act as the host. Truth's show has actually been in the pipeline for a while as a pilot was filmed back in May 2017, but it was never produced as a full series until now. It'll be interesting to see how our truths game show plays out, but having a fun game show may be exactly what the WWE, the fans, and the superstars need in these worrying times.